thank you for joining this AGO Zoom talk on the topic of art and friendship. My name is Erin Prendergast. I'm the Chief of Staff and Head of Strategic Initiatives at the Art Gallery of Ontario. And my guest is my dear friend, Lucila Porterero, Assistant Vice President and Manager of Business Development at Sotheby's Canada. Welcome, Lucila. Thank you. Thank you you so and I much. met more than 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we met more than 25 years ago when we both worked at Sotheby's. It was my first job out of university. I went from being a tree planner to working in the rarefied auction world. So I was pretty clueless in general. And I believe you had just completed teaching Spanish. You're from Barcelona, right. Spain. Yes, Is that right? right? Yes. I, so you and I, sorry, go ahead. I, I was uh, actually teaching, uh, teaching Spanish, yes, um, as a, as a part-time job while I was at the University of Toronto. Um, and that is, you know, right. doing when I first walked into Sotheby's, yes. That's right. You have a graduate degree, a master's degree in art history from U of T, don't you? That is correct, yes. I, I've been at the yes. University of Toronto for a long so, time. Yes. So anyway, you and I were thrust together in this crazy chaotic in environment of regular sales happening all the time. And we immediately bonded. And I think it's because we realized we, we weren't going to get through the auction world without having a good sense of humor. What's what you need. So today is a conversation, but it's also a celebration of more than 25 years of friendship forged in the art market. So Lucila, before I ask you a few questions, can you please tell me a little bit about your role at Sotheby's? Of course, happy to do so. Um, as, you, as you know, Erin, as you pointed out, I've been here for 25 years. Um, and of course my role has changed as, uh, as I have grown uh, within the company. Uh, and right now I am covering all of Canada. Uh, I represent Sotheby's Canada here in Toronto, and I cover the entire country. Um, it's a huge country. I don't have to, to even say that. Uh, but uh, I have to be a lot of things. I have to play many roles in order to fulfill and accomplish the job that I'm supposed to do. But in a nutshell, just to put it very simply, um, my role is um, to act as the liaison between our Canadian clients and all our international offices. So if you have a painting or, or a sculpture or a piece of jewelry or a print that you want to sell, you come to me and I will make sure that you have um, a, an estimate back, uh, terms for consignment, uh, we tell you how the auction process works and then eventually that work of art goes to the best market for for it. Uh, so if we're dealing with, say, a Chinese classical painting, we would send it to Hong Kong for sale. If it is, um, say, a work of art that sells better in London, then it goes to London and, and so forth. Uh, so that is basically what, what I do. Um, of course, being a liaison involves a lot of things. I have to do a lot of business development. I have to do a lot of client relationships development. I need to be lo build loyalty and trust with, uh, with my clients. Um, I provide clients with uh, valuations if they want to uh, have their collection valued for insurance purposes or estate purposes or, or whatever it is that they need. Um, and uh, I connect them. I connect them with all our specialists around the world. Uh, it's, um, it's a lot of work, but it's a fun, it's a fun job. I really have to say that it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, I can assure everyone who's listening that you won't get any better service than from Lucila. So I know, I know that you love dealing with clients and collectors, and that's, that's one of the favorite parts of your job. So can you tell me what drew you into working uh, in the art world and how did you get started in your career? Well, as you mentioned uh, at the beginning of the conversation, uh, I have a bachelor's degree and a master's degree from the University of Toronto. 
and my intention was always to continue uh, studying and um, getting a PhD. But um, but I I don't think that I was ready. I, don't, I, I wasn't ready to make that commitment. It's a huge commitment when you go into the PhD program. Uh, and I decided to just leave the university and uh, look for a job. So I sent uh, letters in my resume to, to various places, including Sotheby's and of course Christie's. So I went to Sotheby's and I went to Christie's. <laughs> and lo and behold, I got a reply from both of them. You know, your standard letter. Yes, exactly. Your standard letter saying, thank you, but no thank you. Uh, there are no opportunities at this time. <laughs> Uh, but we will keep your resume on file should any opportunity arise. So that was that. And what I did was I, I got up from my comfy sofa and I went to Sotheby's. I went to the office at uh, Hazelton Avenue. That's where we used to be. And I walked into the office and I simply said that I wanted to offer my services as a volunteer. And it was just the perfect time because it was November. It was November, 1994. And as you recall, we used to have auctions every May and every November. And we had auctions for silver, for jewelry, and for Canadian art. And they were always back to back. On Tuesday, silver and jewelry, and on Wednesday, Canadian art. So I came in at a very, very busy time. And here I was, just coming out of university with a master's degree and offering to work for free. So, of course, I was hired. I was told to start right away, <laughs> which of course I did. And uh, my, first, uh, my first job was really to stuff envelopes with invitations to the cocktail party uh, during the preview that we had before the auctions. And my other job was to clean the silver that we were going to be selling in our silver auctions. So there I was cleaning silver, but learning a ton because I did not take it as, oh, here I am cleaning the silver. No, 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 no. I've never had the attitude of, um, you know, that something is beneath me. Nothing, as long as it's not illegal, <laughs> nothing is really beneath you. Um, and, uh, and there I was, you know, cleaning the silver and learning about um, different silver makers. That's the first time that I came across Jensen silver, which is fabulous and I loved it. And about silver marks and insulators and whatnot. So it was a, it was a great um, experience. Now, what drew me, what drew me to and the art world? Really, honestly, I think, I think it was my initiative. It was my initiative that drew me to the art world because when I was studying at university, I never, I never imagined that I was going to work for an auction house as prestigious as Sotheby's. That was never in the plan. Maybe that was very irresponsible of me, you know, looking back, that, um, that I never sat down to think, what am I going to do with this degree? I just did it, Erin, because I love it. I know. You know what, Lucila? It's, it's, we, we sort of have similar paths in that I, you, at least you had a degree in art history. I didn't have a degree in art history. And when I finished my degree, I was tree planting for a while. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my career. And I was reading the Globe and Mail, and I saw an advertisement for Sotheby's. And I don't know what got into my head, but I mailed in a letter and I cannot believe it, but they actually, like you, got my letter, opened it, um, and they actually called me in, which is just crazy. But I'm so glad that when you came, um, I didn't scare you away, and you stayed. <laughs> That's very good. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about art now, Lucila. So here, here we are in the middle of a, of a global pandemic. It's a very strange time um, that, that we're living in right now. Tell me, are people buying art? Um, as you say, we are in the middle of a pandemic. This is, um, it's a time of uncertainty uh, and a time of unpredictability. 
uh, you know, we human beings like to control the situation. When something is beyond our control, it's a little scary. And I think you will agree that we find ourselves at a time when we have to go back down to the essentials. What is essential? Well, food is essential and water and medical attention. Is art essential? That's the question. Is art essential? And um, I'm sure that there are people out there uh, thinking, no, no, it's, it's not essential. But, but if that is the case, if art is not essential, then neither is the cherry blossoms and the tulips in the park and the birds that come to Canada after spending the winter elsewhere and they stop in your backyard and they drink the water in your water, you know, your bird bath. Because, you know, human beings are not made of just flesh and bones. We also have a soul. And if it is true that chicken and broccoli and lentils feed our physical needs, then the wonders of nature, art, music, they feed our soul. So I, I think that you can answer that question. Do you think that art is essential? Do you think that people are buying art? Lucila, how did you turn into a philosopher? I, I, this is not a Lucila I know. Like you, you're a poet, you're a philosopher. I am very philosophical, Erin. <laughs> I, I think that that statement of art is essential and that human beings have souls is really lovely and beautiful. And my answer too is art essential, yes. And that kind of leads into my next question, which is many people are self-isolating or, or having to quarantine and they're working from home mm -hmm. and they're looking around bedrooms or their living rooms and they're thinking, man, I gotta do better than this. And they're looking for works of art to enliven and brighten their spaces. I wonder if you could tell me how could, how does one go about buying art online? And what's the process? And I imagine that Sotheby's does have regular online sales that some of our viewers should, should check out. So what's the process? Buying online could not be simpler. It has gotten simpler and simpler and simpler simply because we want people to come to our website and buy art. Our website is very attractive, um, easy to navigate, intuitive. Um, all you have to do is you go to, to the website, which is www.sotheby's.com, and you click on buy, and you go into calendar, and you're going to get a list of all the sales that are coming up. And you just choose the, the, the sale that interests you, and you will see all the lots that are going to be offered. Just simply click on bid on the lot that you're interested in. I mean, of course, you do have to open an account. There are certain little steps, but they are so easy to follow. We actually have on our website a video that gives you all the steps. Easy to use. Um, try it. Uh, hopefully, you'll buy something. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you have any questions or, or you get stuck for whatever reason, which I really doubt you will, we are only a phone call away. Uh, and we have offices in 40 countries, so you'll be able to find one of us to, to answer your questions, but it's really very easy. And- um, Well, I think everyone should contact you, Lucila. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I, um, I'm here to, to help uh, whoever uh, gives me a call or sends me an email. But our online sales are very successful, Erin, because um, uh, you know people are, are cooked at home and, and I wanted to just show very quickly one of the items that we have sold online which is just gorgeous uh, I'm going to put on my glasses so that I can I can see very clearly um, but it's it's this uh, bracelet this is a it's beautiful uh, isn't it beautiful it's a white diamond bracelet with uh, sapphires and uh, emeralds and rubies done in 1913 by Cartier. So, you know, are people buying art? Just to go very quickly to your previous question. People are buying. 
uh, there are different forms of art. Um, jewelry may not be your thing or my thing or somebody else's thing, but the truth is that this bracelet is truly a work of art um, done by a, a major uh, jewelry uh, designer. Uh, it sold for $1.2 million uh, last week. Sorry, $1.3 million wow. last week in, in New York. Uh, so yeah, people are definitely going to our online sales. Uh, they're spending a lot of time there and, and they are buying. That's great. That's really good news. Um, for, for people at home who are just starting out collecting, whether it's jewelry or art or, or collecting sculpt, sculpture, etc., do you have any tips for those who are, who are thinking about starting a collection of sort? Of course. Uh, a few tips. Uh, the first one is um, what we always say. We repeat it over and over and over, which is buy what you like. Uh, and why? Why should you buy what you like? Well, obviously, because you are going to come home with that purchase and you're going to hang that painting on the wall or you're going to put the sculpture on, on a plinth and you're going to share that with people that you live with. If you live with somebody or with your friends who come home for dinner, you, you're going to share it and you are going to live with it. So you have to like it. Uh, so go for things that you like. Um, of course, do your homework. Don't buy on impulse. Uh, attend art fairs. Uh, talk to auction houses. Browse through catalogs. Uh, talk to dealers. Uh, you, you have to inform yourself because it's better to buy informed than just buy. Uh, chances are that uh, you will retain what you're buying when you have done your research. Uh, the third thing. Yes, I, I agree. And I, sorry, go ahead, Lucila. The third thing. The third thing is uh, budget. But, uh, let, but tell me about your agreement there. Yes, that's a very good thing to emphasize budget. I was just going to say that um, just, you know, having a modest collection over my years of, of working in the art world, it really is true. You, you learn, one of the best ways I've learned is just by looking at images all the time, flipping through auction catalogs, going to galleries in the city, um, being online and seeing what's, uh, what, what's on online auctions, going to the library, etc. I just feel that you can develop your own personal eye by constantly looking at images and understanding more about yourself and your own tastes. And really, I find that the art that I've purchased over the years is also what I love, but it also sort of had, starts to reflect a bit of my own, my own personality. And it mm -hmm. gives you know, my home lots of warmth and I guess a little bit of window into who, you know, into who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I'll let you finish talking about budget because of course there's a budget for everything, I'm sure. Exactly. Uh, I mean, if you have, of course, a, a bottomless bag of, of money, you, you can buy anything and make mistakes if you want to and so forth. But um, most of us uh, have, have a budget and we need to, to work with that. So you really need to make decisions as to what you're going to buy. Uh, if, for example, you like um, very well-known artists, like, say, Picasso. Picasso, as you know, is now out of uh, the reach of most people. Uh, his paintings are fetching millions and millions of dollars. However, Picasso was a very prolific artist and he worked in different media. So why not buy one of his prints? You can buy a print in one of our sales or at auction uh, for maybe $30,000, maybe $50,000. Um, if prints is not your thing, you don't like works on paper. Well, Picasso also produced ceramics, those beautiful, beautiful ceramics that are so whimsical, so, so Picasso. And again, you can buy a Picasso ceramic for very little money, really. Uh, and you have an object that is really beautiful that uh, you can definitely share with your friends and your family, and it's by Picasso. Uh, so, you know, it's these type of decisions that you have to make when, um, when you are within a budget. Well, I love that you gave uh, the example of Picasso. Of course, 
Picasso, every, most people are familiar with his extraordinary artwork because the Art Gallery of Ontario has an upcoming Picasso exhibition. Um, yeah. we, we are in the midst of pinning down the date, uh, likely sometime in 2021, but we're very, very excited about it. Um, it's the first time in quite a while that the AGO has uh, offered um, uh, an ex exhibition of Picasso's work. And this one is quite fascinating because it focuses on works from the blue period when Picasso was a very young person. So mm -hmm. extraordinary to understand him as an artist and his growth as an artist when you see works that he produced literally as a teenager and as a young man in his 20s. So I will invite you to lunch, Lucila, with me at the AGO, and we'll go on a tour of the Picasso exhibit when it comes here. So just now to my last question, this, is, this has been so much fun and the time has gone so quickly, but if you could just take a second and tell us what are some of the current trends you're seeing in the auction market and what are, you know, what are people buying or what areas are showing strength? Obviously people who want million dollar carte bra bracelets, that, that is happening, but I'm sure there are other areas of collecting that might be more in favor than others. Knowing that trends come and go, but what are some of the trends right now? Well, uh, really the, the trend right now um, is, uh, it can be summarized in one word, which is digital. Digital. Everybody is going digital. And uh, really for obvious reasons. I mean, look at us. You and I, when we see each other, it's always in person. We hug each other. We have a glass of wine. We, we have dinner. Exactly. When have we ever had a conversation virtually like we do now? I think it's the first time. Uh, so, so the fact that people are home, cooked up at home, after they have uh, cleaned their closets and um, tried new dishes and so forth, well, they are going to go to their computers. They're going to go to the internet and they're going to just navigate and explore. Um, so um, we, we at Sotheby's had the foresight to invest in technology years back um, because technology is, is the future. But who was going to tell us that the future, which you think, oh, it's, it's you know, away, the future is now, right now as we speak. So anybody who says, oh, I have to go digital, when you say going digital, well, it's already a little bit late, isn't it? What you have to be is digital right now. So again, our online sales, they are doing fantastically well. Just to give you uh, an idea, um, from, from the beginning of the year until today, we've had, I believe, 44 online sales, and we have um, sold $80 million in, in art globally. Last year, during the same time period, I don't know that we actually even reached $10 million. So that is the difference, that is the trend. And it's a trend that is not going to change because we human beings, when we try something and it works and we know about it and we're not afraid anymore of the unknown, we're going to continue doing it. So after this pandemic is over, well, we're going to continue the trend, which, which is going to stay with us. Again, you're talking like a philosopher, and I love to hear you talk that way. Um, and just to, just to put it into context a little bit for some of our millennial viewers, when you and I were working together at Sotheby's, we were using typewriters and fax machines. These, these were the days before the internet. <laughs> And don't forget Polaroid cameras. Oh, <laughs> now that's a whole other Zoom talk. Trust me, we'll, we'll come back and we'll tell that story again another time. Um, Lucila, listen, I just want to thank you so much. This was lovely, lovely. You are wonderful. Um, some of the key takeaways for me, again, are your statement that art is essential in our lives, that human beings have souls and art feeds our souls in a way that food or other essentials don't. Um, the point about Picasso, again, everyone 
think in the back of your head, something after this pandemic, come and see the Picasso exhibit at the AGO and that there are lots of opportunities out there to buy art at Sotheby's online. So um, I would just invite all of our viewers to um, go to the Sotheby's website for more information and also to the AGO website, AGO from home, AGO.ca, to look for more content like this or videos on how to make art or other fun activities. So Lucila, I will end this now, but I do want to thank you again. And I really do look forward to seeing you in, per in person sometime soon. Until then, please, please stay well and healthy and give our best regards to everyone at Sotheby's. Of okay? course. And all these feelings are reciprocated. Thank yeah. you Steve, so much for having me. Thank, nice you. Nice you. thank you. And we'll see you soon, Lucila. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.